Hi, Misha here. And relatively recently, Jay and I have done videos on the Israeli divorce, both the X95 and the SAR. And Jay also featured his Steyr AUG A3 M1 in one of his Gun of the Day videos. I've been kind of wanting an excuse to take my trusty AUG A3 back out. And so I thought, why don't we do a video kind of talking about the modern AUG. Now in the past we did a pretty extensive video comparing it with the pre-bands, so I'm not really going to focus much on that. But kind of the reality, the myths, the misconceptions, things basically I hear from customers that are true and not true, and just give you my feedback. This is not a new gun to me. It's seen quite a few rounds. I picked it up in uh, 2013, so I've had it just under seven years as of May 2020. So I am quite familiar with how it runs and maybe a few of its peculiarities. I also do own a pre-band, often referred to as an A1. So let's just jump into it. Something you hear is that the AUG doesn't like, won't run reliably with steel cased ammo. Now part of it could be the brass versus steel, but a lot of it is too that a lot of steel cases loaded lighter and tends to be 55 grain over 62. So let's uh, let's try some some Russian steel case in it and see. So there you have it, and that's definitely not the only mag of steel I've run through this. I've used Wolf and Silver Bear and a few others, and mine runs fine. I know Jay's with his, he needed to set it on the adverse gas setting, at least when it was relatively new, and you can always do that. That's what the increased gas port size is for. So if yours is having trouble with steel, it could just be a break-in thing. These are rather tight-fitted guns when you get them. You might just run a few hundred rounds through it and see how it performs afterwards, and you can again always use the adverse setting. I would just say that if you do use the adverse, make sure you switch it back if you go to brass, especially brass 62 grain NATO specs, spec stuff. The only thing I really noticed with mine is, while it's powerful enough to cycle the action, it doesn't always hold the bolt back on the last round. I'd say it's about 50-50 with steel case. With brass it does. So. That goes to show you, yeah, it is a, a week around, but for plinking, it's also a lot cheaper. And there's all the stuff about steel wearing on your guns. I don't. Nah. I mean, as I tell customers when they ask that, every time you shoot a gun, you're putting wear on it. So it's just a matter of degree. Brass might put a few percent less wear per shot, but it really doesn't matter if, let's say, brass puts... 1% wear and steel puts 1.5% wear. I mean, it, it's wear either way. It's just maybe if you hit the 10,000 round mark, it might start to be noticeable a wee bit. But then again, if you fire 10,000 rounds of steel case versus brass, you probably saved enough money just to buy a new AUG. So that is one kind of common thing. Another one, easy to kind of talk about right now, as I said, Jay, he did a video on his A3M1, which is kind of the current version that came out a few years ago. Mine is the original A3. The differences are very, very minor. Really, they have to do with the receiver. Mine here, the Picatinny rail is part of the receiver. It's not removable. The M1 introduces a modular system where the rail is bolted on to the receiver. It's held on by three screws and a roll pin for stability. And Steyr offers a few different lengths of rail. They also offer a 1.5 and a 3 power scope that can bolt directly to the receiver to give that classic look. 
Essentially, the A3M1 is a slightly updated AUG A2. If you look at an A2 that has the removable 1.5 optic, it just it's an A2 but with a few more modern options. Another thing, mine here has a standard front sling swivel. The uh, the M1, this is now a quick detach socket and it does come with the front swivel, so you get that, but it can be detached. And of course your rear swivel is always detaching in an AUG. You just press the button and pull it out. So those are really the uh, the major differences. Of course something you hear about pretty much all bullpups, at least military level ones, the trigger. And the AUG is no exception, be it pre-ban or modern. The military gun is of course select fire. You pull the trigger back just a little bit for semi or all the way for full. You have a cross bolt safety. Obviously you have this large open trigger guard. Some of the military guns have a restrictor at the bottom of the trigger for semi-auto. Anyway, it is a military trigger. I think what might throw a little people a few people off, it's not a pivoting trigger, it's a straight pullback trigger like on a 1911. I don't find it to be a bad trigger. But then again, I'm used to military triggers, not target triggers. So I may not be the best judge. We had our friend out who had never really shot an AUG, but he helped me take pictures of him before. And he has owned a Tavor, so put this in his hands and let him try it out. Take a look. It's a bullpup. So he agreed that it's not the best trigger in the world, but he also said he could see himself getting used to it. He seemed to indicate that he liked it better first try than his first attempt with his Tavor. And of course there's always the option of putting in an aftermarket trigger pack, but those are pretty expensive. Here's what I kind of generally think about trigger stuff. When you're sitting in your bedroom in your living room dry firing guns, sure, you really notice the things. But when you're out at the range, you're excited, you're focused on your target, adrenaline's maybe going, you just, you don't notice it as much. If anything, you notice more the guns that tend to have trigger slap, but I think the trigger is acceptable. It's smooth enough, and it has a, a predictable and very clean break for what it is yeah it doesn't really bug me at all but that's just me your mileage may vary but I would say to truly see a trigger's worth you need to try it at the range dry firing it alone really only tells half the story you notice I put in a somewhat longer mag that's because another common question about AUGs has to do with the magazines. For some time now Steyr has done two types and actually the difference really is to the mag it uses is to do with the stock. So you can switch between. The original Steyr mags were developed in the 70's so before Stan Ag was really a thing and are well, what you'd expect from the country that came up with the Glock. They're polymer, they're very lightweight, they're translucent, so you can check your ammo, and they're very durable. Even though there's not really much metal reinforcement going on, you don't hear of these breaking, and I think a lot of it has to do with this neat little waffle pattern. They do also have a last round bolt hold open, 
So a modern feature. Now the original A1 did not have an external release on an empty, so you had to use the charging handle. The A3 though does have a release control. It can also be used as a manual hold back if you press when the bolt's back. So probably pretty much a full featured thing. They're reliable, they're durable, they don't rust, and they just look right in the dog. But a lot of people want Stanag M16 M4 mags. Why? Because people own these. Pretty much everyone who has a 223 gun at all has AR mags. And they're extremely inexpensive and you have lots of options from plastic to different polymers, different metals, alloy steel. You have all kinds of capacities from low cap, 20, 30, 40, 50, 3,508, whatever. So why would you not want this in your AUG? My personal opinion, I would stick with the Steyr mags. few reasons. For one, they have these two basic sizes, 30 rounds and 42. So there is a larger capacity available. Like I said, dur durability and all that's fine. Uh, price is fine. At some points they've dropped as low as 10 bucks, but typically they float in the 30 to 40 dollar range. Now keep in mind that is brand new, not surplus, and that would be true Austrian make. So not cheap, but yeah. The thing is, the AUG that takes AUG mags is quite a bit cheaper than what they refer to as the AUG NATO that takes AR mags. We're talking two to three hundred dollars cheaper. So if you want the NATO version, you're going to pay quite a few more bucks. My opinion, and it's just my opinion, is instead of paying that few hundred more bucks, why not just buy AUG mags with that money? And then you, you've got them. On top of that, when you go to the Stanag version, you lose some features. Namely, you lose this external bolt control. Yes, you still have an internal hold open, but it reverts to more the A1 style where you have to use the charging handle to release it. A lot of people don't seem to care about this, but the thing is, back when the CZ Bryn 805 did the same thing, people complained. So I find it a little funny they don't complain with the, uh, with the AUG. Also, when you go to the NATO version, you lose the option for left side ejection. The uh, standard AUG mag stocks have this plate over the left side. You can switch the bolt type and eject to the left. Can't do that with the NATO. You're stuck with right hand ejection, which is a bit of a problem because there's not really a brass deflector on this gun to speak of. Not like on the Tavor, at least. So it can be rather unpleasant as a left handed person to shoot it with the right handed port unless you train yourself to use your right hand. So you lose two features and you pay 200 or more dollars. I just, again, my opinion, take that 200 bucks and buy 6, 8, 10 AUG mags. Again, they're very durable, very reliable, and they look cool. And they, they're just the right mag for the gun. I appreciate commonality, but at some point you gotta go, it's always good to have the right mag the gun was built for. And Steyr did a really good job with that. And for my final thing here, you might wonder why I decided to buy or keep one of the A3s that came to the store when I already had a A1 from the 1980s. Yeah, but you, I bet you thought I wasn't going to bring it out. Of course I am. Why not? But this is the reward for people waiting for the end of the video. <laughs> and again, we really did do a full comparison of this. We also compared it with the reproduction, the 40th anniversary, the SDG 77. So check that video out if you haven't. It's a few years old now, but still relevant. So yeah, I've had this. The uh, the AUGs are kind of crazy in price for a while. This is a early-ish pre -band. It has the open-ended flash rider, 20-inch chrome line, cold hammer forged barrel, 109 twist rate, 
pretty standard. Has the A1 1.5 optic, which is fixed. If you break your optic, you're kind of SOL because this is part of your registered receiver. What are you going to do? This has the so called donut of death. It does have basic iron sights built into the top. Most of these, like this one, came in in green. They did take the same mags. Again, there's no bolt hold open here. It does have the left side ejection option, though. So, honestly, pretty similar. Now, they did import some black carbines in the 80s, and they imported a very few special receiver guns that had a rail on top. But 90% were, were this style here, which is the Austrian military SDG 77 style that's still in service today. But when these A3 started coming in, I held off grabbing one for the first, oh, six months or so. But I just couldn't resist forever. There were just too many reasons I wanted one. Okay, first and foremost, saving wear and tear on my original. Of course, that's always a concern. This is a 100% Austrian gun, and these were banned from import in 1989. And then, when they tried to import a post-ban thumbhole stock version, known as the USR, it too was banned by name in 1997, so Steyr kept getting slapped down. You didn't really hear much from them until after the end of the assault weapons ban in the end of 2004. But the Microtech MSAR STG 556 really showed there was still tons of interest in the Steyr AUG around 2005-2006. Keep in mind this is well before the Tavor. With that, even though Steyr had been slapped down more than once, they partnered with Sabre Defense to offer the AUG A3. And uh, that would have been around 2008-2009. The, uh, the Sabre guns had a Sabre made receiver and a button rifle barrel and were built with a brand new all matching A3 kit. And we've already talked about the differences between A1, A2, and A3 a little bit in this video. And again, in our other videos, we'd, we'd go into more detail. But that's just the modern version. And these Sabre guns typically had this 16-inch barrel because it's modern times. Carbines have more or less replaced rifles. But Steyr still keeps with the 1 and 9 twist as the standard because it fires both 5.5 grain and 6.2 grain reasonably well. Well unfortunately Sabre got into trouble for unrelated stuff with the government and went out of business, leaving Steyr without a partner in 2011. The first thing they did, they grabbed all the complete and incomplete Sabre receivers they could and assembled some guns themselves in 2012. Then they introduced this version here. I got it in 2013. It's a really neat thing. Most of your parts, bolt, bolt carrier, in my case the optic. I love these pickles, the armored pickles. And I can't use them. Furniture, charging handle. You can tell the difference on the A1 versus A3. Are all Austrian and all serial numbers match? But the 89 ban and the 97 ban for imports are still very much in effect even though the assault weapons ban expired. So Steyr has to get around this, as do every other company that sells such guns. Beretta, CZ, SIG, HK, on and on and on it goes. So they all have to be either imported as sporters or assembled in the USA. Well, Because of how the AUG is and because of it being banned by name, and because of past negative experiences, Steyr took the safer route and decided to bring over a parts kit and build them here. So the receiver can't be brought in. Well, in 2005, under the Bush administration, essentially barrels were also banned. So you couldn't bring barrels in with parts kits. So they, they needed to make the barrel and the receiver. What to do? Well, for the receiver, 
Steyer partnered with Vator, and Vator would make the receivers for Steyer, and Austria would provide them with plans and blueprints for their latest models, which, which at the time were the A3, later the A3M1, which over there is known as the AUG SF, Special Forces. So, Vator is making them under license using their tech, and they even got a variance from the ATF to have these labeled and roll marked Steyr Arms, not Vator, which is a neat, neat, neat ass touch. So, the receiver, when you look at it, says Steyr. It's important from a collecting point of view, it really is. And the barrel is also pretty neat. Now, Austria is very famous. Steyr for their cold hammer forge barrels. Original pre band barrels go for pretty big money. What Steyr did, since not many American companies do cold hammer forging, they brought over mandrels, barrel blanks from Austria, so basically just the raw steel, but at least they're using the raw steel, and they contracted with FNH USA to finish them out profile them and make them in different links. These are cold hammer forged and up until very recently chrome lined. Now as far as I know the most recent batches they've gone to nitriding but mine here and the ones for the last several years were chrome lined. Typical twist rate was the standard 1 in 9 although they have done special runs of 1 in 7 to appease people. Typical length is the 16 inch although they have done quite a few 20s and even some 24s. They talked about doing a 13 inch either with a permanently attached flash rider or as an SBR but I don't know that this ever really got off the drawing board. Probably just not enough time because FN is very busy. So while the barrel is technically made in the USA it's made with Austrian steel to Steyr specs and it's made by FN so if you can't get a Steyr CHF barrel, I would think FN would be the next best choice. Now, I know some people have said that the newer FNs aren't as high quality. I don't know. And it's the internet. Take everything you read on there with a grain of salt. And first-hand experience is always key. I'll give you mine, but please, if you have your own share, and don't take anyone's word at face value, including my own. Trust, but verify, I suppose. So when these A3s started coming in, I handled them, and I compared them in my head with my original. And I thought immediately, these things have really nice fit and finish. The upper to lower fit, the upper to the receiver to stock fit, very nice. The bolt travel, very smooth. Trigger, the same. Jay and I never really noticed a difference in accuracy. And having the modular upper, be it like mine with a fixed pick rail, or like Jay's with a removable one, is so much more flexible than a fixed, hope you don't drop and damage it, 1.5mm optic. Also, I really like the, here's the original square charging handle. This, uh, this style I really like more. It folds. It's a more ergonomic shape. Yeah. And these were standard 16 inch, so 4 inches shorter. The only negative, because of some of the new features and the slightly beefier receiver, the newer AUGs are a little bit heavier. Not a significant amount, under a half a pound heavier. But when I pick them up, I do notice this is a little bit chunkier of a gun than my pre-band. On the other hand, that does make it feel a little more substantial. As far as reliability, it's been just as good. I know common think is always that they don't make them like, like they used to, which is definitely true. But sometimes they do, or if not, close enough. Pre-bands were getting up to four grand before Steyr re-released with the A3. That's brought the price on pre-bands down a bit, but I, was, I thought the price on the A3 was, was pretty fair. When they first came out, they were around 2000 brand new. And it's dropped more to around 1800 even 17 on sale sometimes. Is it cheap? No way. But it is a Steyr AUG. And given past track records of Steyr's honestly bad luck with their U.S. market guns, who knows how long they'll do these. 
It's been over seven years, which is honestly longer than I thought they would, but they do produce them in quite small numbers. So they're, they're not flooding the market with them. And once they're gone, I think these will be pretty well sought after, and more importantly, they're just fun, reliable guns, and they're extremely close to the current military offerings from Steyr. And on a more, you know, personal, kind of emotional level, I have to applaud Steyr's dogged determination to offer semi-automatic rifles to the American market. You know, mo most other companies, <coughs> HK, would have just given up or said, uh, you know, piss off. Steyr has repeatedly tried to deliver what we asked for. And even when we want other things, they've done, for example, different colors of stock. They do the black and the green standard. They do a tan mud. They do a white. They've even done some camo stocks. Like I said, they've done three different barrel lengths. They've even tried a 9mm kit, which they brought in a few of in 2012, 2013, whatever it was. But again, <laughs> I don't know why ATF or Imports doesn't like Steyr. After bringing in, I think it was 500 kits or whatever, they banned them. They banned the conversion kit for 9mm. Somehow, it's okay for IWI to sell them, but not Steyr. So, God bless them. They try. They really do. <laughs> I will say, too, one other neat thing Steyr did, Steyr USA, Steyr Arms, as soon as the assault weapons ban was lifted in October of 2004, they started getting approval and bringing over brand new Steyr mags for the AUG, which appeared in 05, which is great because he knew there were tons of people in the U.S. that owned either AUG A1s or USRs that had been starving for brand new mags since all the wackiness had gone, uh, gone down in 94. And of course, mags will eventually wear out, although this is an original mag that you know, came with the gun 40 years ago and uh, it still works fine, so they really do seem to hold up. Which, yeah, is what you'd expect from the country that gave us the Glock 17. They just do well with polymer. So yeah, that's kind of uh, revisiting the, the AUG. Talking about some things that customers often asked about. I sure like mine, and I'm always happy to take it to the range. Jay liked mine enough, he got his own. And uh, you never know, our friend that joined us might end up getting one in the future too now. So They have that habit of... Once you get behind the trigger and actually shoot them, they kind of win you over. In the gun shop, maybe they're not as impressive, but they're just damn fun. And anyway, as I said at the beginning, we've talked about the Tavor, so it's only on us to talk about the original bullpup, the Steyr AUG. And yes, I know AUG, AUG, whatever. I'm an American AUG. Army Universal Rifle Gewehr. What a cool gun. And iconic for any of us that grew up in the 1980s. Appreciate you tuning in with us and uh, hope everyone's staying safe. Any questions or comments or if you own an A3 or A3M1, we'd love to hear it below. If you had any problems with your A3 or A3M1, we'd love to hear it below. Because I've sold well over a hundred of these and the customers, to my knowledge, have all been pretty darn happy. But there's always a limit and I'm always looking to know things to give the best info I can to customers, so if you've had an experience, please let us know. And with that, if you could like, share, and subscribe. And also, if you'd like to help support us, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and Jay and I both will catch you very soon next time.